Hey everyone, Tactics here. In this video, I'll be walking you through a solo question mark, question mark difficulty kill of Zekvir, giving you some strategy and talent tips to hopefully help you get this boss down and get some of the cool season limited rewards, including this fancy void skin for the Delver's Dirgible. There's also the Ascension Breaker title here uh, that you can grab as well. So a couple cool things. And again, this is limited to this season and apparently it's going away and it's going to be a new Delve boss in the next one now as of the recording of this video i have killed this on a few different specs and what i can say immediately off the top here is that scaling and tools that specs have uh, accessible to them are not equal right so there are going to be some specs and classes in the game that have a much much easier time dealing with this boss than others and some will have problems but they're going to be different than the problems that other specs face for example here i walked in on my blood dk and literally one shot it they have like a counter to every single mechanic whereas i had to put in quite a few attempts on my guardian druid and my prop warrior to actually defeat it and the problem areas for guardian and prop warrior are actually two very different things because of this i'll try and walk you through exactly what all the potential problems were at least the ones that I faced and then suggest general pieces of utility that if you have and have the ability to spec into whether it's your spec your class tree whatever then you should do that and that will help you counter those mechanics to start though let's talk a bit about Baran because he is of course 50% of your group in this delve it does obviously still count if you're running with brand so the solo achievement so as a tank player this was my brand setup for this so of course I, I had him as a damage dealer this also allows him to interrupt things for the combat curio i put idle final will uh, again as a tank player i'm not doing a ton of damage on my own potentially if you're a dps player you'd want to use the porcelain arrowhead especially if you have this at a higher rank i have both of them at rank one so it's not a not a huge thing also my brand's level 38 when i did this um if you're a healer again you're probably gonna want idle final well this is quite a bit of damage the one thing is you do have to aim it it's kind of a line attack that brand will occasionally shoot out my one recommendation if you are running idle of final will is to not tunnel hitting the line every single time it's not the end of the world there's a lot of stuff you need to dodge or run out of or avoid or whatever on this boss fight and so if that means that this lines up with that and ends up missing let it miss do not tunnel to try and hit this and then die to something else oops close that um my other curio again i don't really have a lot of great options here i ended up just running the time lost relic i think the amorphous relic is also fine to kind of whatever you have at a high level here uh, is probably pretty good between these two and then there's just what role you use like i mentioned earlier tanks healers you're probably going to want to use a damage dealer dps if you don't have a ton of self-sustain healer is probably the better option for you that is the brand setup now i want to talk about the abilities that you're going to be facing for most of the fight and then i'll talk about what kind of things you can talent into to actually counter them so let's pull up the little video i've got here uh, and we'll walk you through just all the abilities once and then we'll uh go through the utility so first claw smash this is a frontal attack here this can target you or brand it can target either of you uh, and so you need to be prepared to avoid this frontal cone obviously bad if you're too far away from the boss when this happens because it's a cone of course so it gets bigger uh, but you can bait this away from things to your advantage following this is the fear circle uh, and this is just an aoe around the boss fears anything that gets hit so you need to get out of that then there's the enfeebling spittle coming up as you can see here and that is an interrupt cast uh if it goes off which i think it does go off here it's a magic dot and this dot is also a snare that is important because you can use snare breaks to remove it so you see there i didn't waste a kick on that we'll talk about that in a bit but uh that is an interruptible ability and bran usually kicks every other cast of that ability kind of depending on if you get any um spider spawns but uh that that is something that he will occasionally kick so you won't need to use something every single time angler's web is another frontal attack this one is always targeting the player it's a smaller frontal and if it does hit you it's it kind of pulls you in deals pretty heavy damage so you want to make sure you are sidestepping that one and then there's the call web terror as the final ability this just spawns an ad shows a little web here it spawns a cocoon and this cocoon spends 20 seconds hatching and then if this actually ends up hatching and you don't kill it in time it spawns an ad which will do an interruptible cast on you that stuns you for five seconds and deals some pretty heavy damage so you want to make sure you are swapping to that 
Uh, and then there's actually one more kick. Did I miss it? Uh, I might have missed it here. You might have been right after this. Yeah, regenerating carapace. This is just a self heal on the boss. Uh, and you can see I'm basically saving my kick for that every single time. So let's talk about utility here, right? Let's talk about utility. Extra interrupts, silences, whatever. Because like I mentioned, you're not going to be able to get every single one of these spittle casts. Brand will only get like every other. If you accidentally spawn an ad, that guy's got an interrupt. Having an extra kick for that is great. You want to always, always, always save your kick for the regenerating carapace. An example of things here, uh, disrupting shout was a great talent as a prot warrior to get into. Uh, just as, as an example, that really, really helped. Another thing, snare breaks, freedom effects, magic dispels, anything like that to help you remove that enfeebling spittle that I was talking about earlier. Uh, where does it go? It goes out here. Remember, it's a, it's a magic dot here. Uh, you're going to see when it goes out. I, as a druid, have this very easy. This is, this is one of the super easy mechanics for a druid specifically because it goes off. All you need to do is shapeshift. It's gone, right? Obviously, this is going to be easier for some specs than other. Hunter is probably going to have a pretty easy time with this one, right? But this was actually one of the problems for, for my warrior because basically what you have to end up doing is either using your dwarf racial or lining up your avatar specifically for when Brand missed a kick, right? So kind of, kind of uh, you know, a little bit spooky on certain timings there for a warrior because that dot deals some pretty heavy damage, at least in the tank version of this fight, if you don't remove it immediately. Uh, another relatively small thing, fear immunities. Um, you can kind of see here, actually, the web terror is going to spawn like right under the boss. And then the fear is going to go off uh, right under, uh, right on top of this mob. So if you had a fear immunity, uh, like Berserker's Rage here as a warrior, this was this was like quite easy. Like I could kind of, if this ever happened and I didn't bait the fear in a good spot or the ad spawned right under us, you could bait, uh, you could just stand here. Pop Berserker's Rage, be immune to this fear, and keep hitting this cocoon, whereas here I have to kind of step off of it uh, as an example. So that is that is something that fear immunities have a relatively small benefit, but uh, something nonetheless. And the other thing is actually stuns. So if this guy ever does hatch uh, and Brand's kick is on cooldown, which you can track, by the way, if Brand is a, deep, a DPSer, you can, I think it's on his frame, like he has like a debuff that shows his kick uh, timer. So if he doesn't have a kick available, that stun's going off. You obviously want to make sure you're saving your kick for the regenerating carapace. What you can do is you can use your stun on the ad. And I was actually specced into Mighty Bash for this fight as a guardian druid. And that saved me multiple times just using Mighty Bash on this ad. And it gave me enough time to actually kill the ad uh, if, if I didn't kill the cocoon in time. So single target stuns, very, very valuable. And then just generally here, any movement speed increase, whether that's through talents, whether that's through enchants, whatever it is, gems, very, very good in this in this boss fight generally, just because it, there's so many things to dodge, there's so many things to go around. It's there, There's a lot that movement speed helps you through. Now, let's go through the two phases here, because of course, question mark, question mark difficulty has a second phase. Uh, and so, like I said, basically, right, you're coming in, you've got that frontal initially, uh, you've got the interrupt, which here, usually, this is actually bad luck. Usually, Brand kicks this first one. He didn't this time. As a druid, it's not a big deal because I can just shapeshift it, but something to keep in mind. And the biggest thing here is that you see I am going to be pooling damage for this spawn. Like, I didn't pop Incarn. I've gotten my six stacks of feline potential. I'm playing Druid of the Claw here. So I'm going to have a big cat spender, and that's kind of the whole strategy with, with my... Uh, druid on this one is that i'm going to build up six stacks of feline potential for every single web terror spawn and make sure that i use an empowered finisher on that web terror that that is my goal to try and kill it before it actually spawns so i'm saving my kick for the regenerating carapace i'm interrupting it and then i'm moving on to the cocoon here while i'm in incarn and that gives me enough and i'm seeing i'm hard focusing here the one thing i should have done better is i should have been baiting this frontal as you can see, the frontal is queued up, basically, right? So it's going to happen. And so I should have done a sidestep here. I should have probably moved, like, here. And then that would have baited the frontal there, and I could have safely just been on it the whole time instead of stepping off it for a second. It's not the end of the world, but it would have saved you a bit of time on this. And that's something you can consistently do throughout the fight. You can bait the fears. You can bait the frontals away from those priority mobs, uh, which is, is quite useful. And then otherwise, this phase just repeats like that, right? And... and for timers, by the way, this is just big wigs. Uh, and so it's pretty useful to kind of see when things are up, when things are queued to happen, and you can kind of, you know, per, you know, uh, position accordingly to deal with those things. 
and it's just kind of a balancing act here of putting damage into the boss but also ensuring you have enough damage to actually deal with the the eggs whenever they spawn that was like the biggest problem as a guardian druid here uh, is is ensuring that uh so the the like i said the the interrupts weren't really a problem for me it could very easily save regenerating carapace but potentially for the prot warrior for example one of course he, he also was worried about killing the ads but the other thing is he would get messed up if the enfeebling spittle uh, ever didn't get kicked if brand accidentally or decided he was going to kick an ad even though as the prompt warrior i had so much lockdown on the ad but brand kind of has these kick hacks where if he uh decides that a cast has just started he's insta kicking it right so if you ever don't get the cc chain right as the warrior and the cast starts and brand's kick is off cooldown he'll kick that and then you won't have a kick for the enfeebling spittle and then that can be problematic if you don't have dwarf or avatar ready to remove it right so that was kind of the prop warrior problem whereas the the guardian druids problem uh is more hey if i didn't kill the ad what the heck am i going to do right because i have uh i have mighty bash but that is literally it for lockdown and and that was the thing too actually before i even specced into mighty bash like i was having some problems with that ad because if it got a kickoff i was just i was just dead basically and there was no way, real way for me to lock it down because you know in cap or puts it down for a second uh you know you can like typhoon it for a second but there's not a ton mighty bash is really your only thing here actually I wonder if i oh there there's a brand kick um but that would have been a potential for a mighty bash there brand actually kicked that one uh, which is nice um but this is just kind of a repeat here until 60 percent on the boss so as soon as the boss gets to 60 percent here that's when the next phase will begin and that actually empowers some of the boss's abilities but you can see here generally positioning wise these web terrors have set spawns by the way there's like two spawns here there's one spawn back and then there's a spawn in all of these little little wall areas here so those are the various spawns you can see i kind of keep the boss relatively central to allow me to quickly pull zekir over to a spawn whenever it happens to get some cleave value because of course i want to be dumping damage into the web cocoons themselves uh, but i don't want to waste all that damage right and, uh, especially as a guardian druid a lot of my damage will cleave so having Zekfir there is is pretty useful and also not having to run super far away from Zekfir when the when the web spawns is useful because it doesn't bait these bad cones right so luckily again here i was in a good spot to bait the cone here and brand's also obviously in a good spot to bait the cone away but things you need to think about right watch the cones when the egg cocoons are coming out just so you don't have a bad one especially if your egg cocoon spawns far be aware of that um, but let's go to the 60 percent transition here Uh, here it is so at 60 percent, he's going to run to the center of the room he's going to start this channel he's immune to damage during this channel so don't worry about that uh, and basically what this does is this now empowers multiple of his abilities so his self heals now blood infused carapace i think the old one was like a 10 percent heal this one's like a 25 percent heal so again doesn't really change anything always 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 kick that ability uh the horror ability here this is the fear infinite horror is the new fear this is now still a circle but that circle also shoots out four orbs in a straight line like on the cardinal directions and if those hit you those also fear you so you need to get out of the circle and avoid the orbs path um the actual angler's webbing is a little bit different it actually will shoot a webbing and, and spawns portals and then the webbing will go through portals as well i'll show you to make that make sense uh, and then there's a new ability in unending spines which basically the boss just spawns a ton of both player targeted and random swirlies on the ground and these swirlies one shot uh, so you need to make sure you are avoiding those for the five seconds i believe that they are spawning they'll come up in a second here boom swirlies on me random some on me random so just making sure you're avoiding those and speed's great otherwise a lot of things are the same right you're still dealing with the ads making sure you're pulling damage for the ads you can see again like i was talking about line potential uh here's the angler's web this is kind of a bad one to look at so I'll, I'll fast forward to another one actually okay uh yeah there it is okay so let's let's look at this so basically when angler's web spawns now he spawns a bunch of portals so angler's web is going to go out boom a bunch of portals go out and this is going to usually be aimed at one of the portals in this case this one so his line attack is going to go out it's going to go through one of the portals and then it's going to shoot between two portals you can't actually see there's more portals behind me so i'll show you another one probably but um you can see 
if you go let's go slow-mo here when he shoots there's going to be a web that comes from here between these two portals boom that is still a projectile it will still grip you and that will do a lot of damage to you it'll pull you through the portal pull you through portals it's not great um so you want to make sure you are whenever that's going out of course dodging the attack but then not standing between two portals because you don't know because there are all the portals back here you don't know which ones are going to be the ones that are that actually uh, shoot the line through right so there's a bunch of I, another terrible view let's go here you don't know which of these two portals the line is going to shoot between right it could be any of them so you need to make sure you're not between any of them so i move over here right and it ends up being these two back here but i'm safe uh i think actually this might have been bad if it was these two specifically but just basically keep in mind it could shoot between two any two any two of these could be the the line attack so that's what you need to avoid um let's look at the infinite horror here it should be coming up in a second actually because like i said it's going to be a circle attack and you're going to see here on the cardinal directions these orbs basically they're going to shoot out in a line as well so you need to make sure you are avoiding these orbs also and again this is another one of the things where having just a ton of move speed is really useful because the the timer to get out of the fear is actually a little bit tight sometimes so if you don't react instantly to get out of the fear circle it's it's quite easy to get hit by that fear and that's usually going to lead to your death so be aware of that but then this is just a rinse and repeat with those empowered abilities so like i said any extra interrupts or silences you can have any snare breaks freedom effects or magic dispels that is really really useful to allow you to never interrupt the enfeebling spittle and save all of your kicks for the blood infused carapace for the ads, you want to make sure you are pooling damage, killing these cocoons. Oh, there's an orb going out. Make sure you're watching that. Uh, make sure you're killing those cocoons with your pooled damage. And if the cocoon ever hatches, use single target stuns if you have them on the mob to prevent it from stunning you or hope that Bran kicks it. Uh, the other thing is to make sure if you have them, fear immunity, that's relatively small. You can just save if you have a bad bait on top of an ad. Uh, or movement speed just in general to help with all of this dodging that you're going to have to do but there we have it guys that is my guide to the question mark question mark zekvir solo uh delve for season one of the war within hopefully it helps you unlock your titles unlock your mount skin if it does make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like it and if i missed anything if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below and i will do my best to answer otherwise as always, thank you to my amazing Patreons for their support, and I'll see everyone in the next video.